this is very, very cool. I wonder if this means that they are confirming that we'll get a 5-star Herta. Because I really want a 5-star Herta. I love Herta. I love the Kuru Kuru. But I want real Emanator Herta to be playable. This is so random out of nowhere. But I, I, I love it. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Subscribe, please. So it seems like here they're going to actually showcase Rappa's abilities, uh, which I'm very excited about because I didn't really look at, uh, you know, dreams and speculations. <clears throat> what I'm thinking is that she's probably going to be a... With the direction of things, I think they're going to double down on Super Break. So I assume she might be a Super Break unit. Or at least a unit. There's more and more DPS that are able to break um, Toughness Bar regardless of enemy weaknesses. And we've had that for Destruction. No, wait. We have that for Neility. Uh, destruction. Well, Destruction in a sense, right? Because Neility... Obviously, we have Acheron that can just break any any weaknesses during her ultimate. Uh, destruction, we have Firefly. She implants a type of uh, weakness on the enemies, right? Um, Face Shadow. Uh, she has... Um, ultimate can break any weaknesses, right? So I could see Rappa being either she implants a weakness or she's able to to reduce the toughness bar of any weaknesses. Uh, she might also have super break damage, right? We haven't had super break damage um, in the few recent characters. Well, in the recent character, Fisher doesn't have super break, right? So maybe we're going to get more DPS as super break. And I think that would be a good thing for Erudition because Erudition is a bit lackluster, I would say. And it would be nice to see a character that actually has the ability to be strong outside of pure fiction. And I think there's potential. What I think her kit would look like, I think she's able to throw a shuriken. It would make sense to me. Like, it's not really a shuriken. It's that big blade. Um, I would think it's kind of like Sampo. It would, like, spin and bounce between enemies. Kind of like what... Uh, I'm afraid that would be too similar to Welt. Uh, but that could probably work. And um, obviously, she, her basic attack is at least Blast. I think her skill would be a bouncy thing. And then for ultimate, I, I really have no idea for ultimate. I assume it's going to be a big AoE that can just uh, break any toughness reduction. That, that would be my call. So let's see what it is. According to my intel, Rappa has always considered herself a ninja. Okay. And she attributes everything in the world to ninjutsu. Okay. <laughs> There we go, holy yap! When I use my technique, I enter the graffiti Alright, so look at that, she's actually using like two of her blades to make a surfboard and she's surfing around, that's pretty cool. State, swiftly moving forward, attacking any enemies in my path. Okay, so she hits so the first enemy she bonks. this is dazzling ninjutsu, huh? There's graffiti all over the place. Are what is this, Splatoon? Are you sure you didn't pick this up from a certain hacker? Wait, is... is that a skateboard you're standing on? This is a Ningu. Time to unleash a flurry of ninjutsu techniques. When entering combat in the graffiti state, I reduce the toughness of all enemies irrespective of weakness type. And what did I say? <laughs> okay, and she has that just straight up with the technique. That's pretty cool. But it's an offensive technique, which means you have to hit with it first, right? It's more of a DPS technique. So it's not like... Um, you can pair her with, like, an Acheron and do that, right? It's got to be one or the other. During battle, Rappa's skill will inflict imaginary-type damage on all enemies. Okay. After activate well, that's straightforward. It's just imaginary-type damage on all enemy, no bouncy stuff. In my ultimate, I enter the seal form state, gain a certain number of chroma ink points, and unleash Ningu, Demon Bane, Petal Blade. Oh, so this is like uh, Face Shao and Akron. She enters a certain, like, a different state. And then she has multiple attacks, I assume. She said she gains a certain amount of Ningu points, or whatever it's called, or of something point. And here we see there's three of them. So I assume it's going to be a way for her to have more points, maybe. Or, like, maybe some constellation will give her, like, double the amount or something. I could see that being crazy. Okay. I wonder how... Yeah, okay. Aha. I like that this is like first-person shooter. 
a first-person combat perspective. There it is. How utterly unexpected. Okay, so that's blast we'll damage. The opponent is a new enemy. With so I assume this is gonna be like Akron, like blast damage, blast damage, and the last hit is everyone. Which will appear in version 2.6. The those are new enemies. No, those are just the the troop with monkey head. This is not new enemy. It's just monkey heads. An academic office. What Whatever they, they say. Doing? Banacademics publishing academic titles? They transform? Oh my god, okay. This is the you have my attention, head. it's incredibly Combo dumb. Move. Fear not the approaching foes. The first few hits of Ningu Demon Bane Petal Blade deal imaginary blast damage. Okay. And the final hit deals imaginary to all enemies. During seal form, my weakness break efficiency is increased, okay. allowing me to reduce the toughness of enemies even without imaginary weakness. Okay. Check it. Dazzling tags, hidden blades. That's just a tease for a ninja like me, taking evil is a breeze, and afraid of no enemy. Bring in the heat. Time to show them real skills. I can't be beat. With danger ahead, weakness type ignored. In the dojo, no luck, just power explored. Reduce toughness, cut them down with ease. Every strike I hit brings them to their knees. Uh -huh. <gasps> well, I hate it here. <laughs> is that the ninja mantra that Rabba was talking about? Okay, so it is at least one of the things. I was kind of right. Right. Okay, she doesn't have super break, but she is able to reduce toughness bar regardless of type with her ultimate as well as with her technique. Um, and she overall just has some blast damage and some all enemies. It's not that skill is all enemies, um, because that means that she she has some great potential with someone like Jade, right? Because Jade gets one stack for every enemy hit essentially. So her skill being all enemies obviously is very good. It's similar to what like Herta has. Um, it's definitely better than what Himeko has. So Jade will be able to do some good stuff here. Gets a lot of stacks, which is very, very good. Um, on top of it, the universal toughness break, toughness bar reduction is obviously very good with the ulti. What I wonder is when she ultis, is every single attack gonna give stacks to Jade? Um, I don't know. I'm very curious about that. I haven't tried that at all. Like, does that work for Akron's ulti and Jade, for example? Um... I assume not, because I feel like that would be broken. Uh, but that's certainly interesting at the very least. Um, so her kit, definitely interesting. I kind of wish they talked about uh, her traces, right? Especially her major traces, because I really want to know like what it's going to bring to the table. Because the major traces tend to really change the kit dramatically. Uh, so I want to know that. Maybe it was included in the information they just gave us. But um, I, I, I'm I curious about how it's going to end up looking. Now we as also have the banners being shown here. I will say her light cone does look pretty good. The art here is great. Ninjutsu is Crimson Dazzling Evil, Evil Breaker. So Erudition as well as Imaginary. And her team is composed... Oh, I don't know why I said team. The four star on the banner are going to be Lynx. Uh, Lynx is a okay healer. Um, she can dispel... She can cleanse with her ultimate. She scales off of HP. Now her healing ability itself is a bit low. So it's not the, the best amounts of survivability. Um, she can increase your team's max HP. We can serve some purposes, I think, with some characters that scales off of HP. Uh, even though we don't have a lot, I think that would be pretty good with like someone like... Um, what's his name? Blade. Also, because if she targets someone that's like Destruction, um, that will give them more aggro, aggro, which is good for Blade. Here, I don't really know if it's going to be pertinent for Rappa. Then Shui, obviously, uh, can be very good, especially at uh, seat 6. She's a decent break uh, crit hybrid. She can be used as a sub-DPS. Uh, ultimate also has um, universal toughness bar reduction, which is pretty good. And then we have uh, Yukong. The problem with Yukong, I think, is that she she's hard to play. She simply is very hard to play. And the thing is that when you use her, you need to perfectly fine-tune your team speed. And it can be kind of annoying, to be honest. Uh, so I, I just don't want to go through the trouble 
I think those four stars are a little bit underwhelming, to be honest. Um, yeah, I'm not particularly excited about those. I think the most interesting one here is probably Shui Yi. But again, if you're pulling for a DPS, you probably don't care about getting another DPS. But, I mean, um, she can kind of... I, I can see why she's here, considering, like, the the big ultimate that ignores, like, uh, toughness, uh, weaknesses, sorry, is kind of similar to Rapa, so it's like, uh, at least you get something out of here. Uh, but I would definitely not pull for four star on this banner. I would not build pity at all here. I think it's a bad idea. Building pity is always dangerous, and I think here it's not worth it. Now, for the four star weapons, um, yeah, I think this one is a new one. The, the top one here, I don't know what it does. Um, those two, I think this one is relatively new. Um, that came out like a patch or two ago. This one, I don't remember exactly what it does, but I think it's just not that super interesting. I think there's like one character or two that can make relative use of it, uh, but it's not the best. I don't remember if it's Hunt or Destruction. Uh, okay, I want to know what uh, her like can do. A character, Dan Hung, in Lune is uh, we have a rerun of Dan Hung. Well, actually, here it's a little bit more interesting because Yu Kong is probably best played with Dad Hang with like her buff and stuff. Um, so there is some value there, even if I feel like you can probably have some same or better result with like stronger five star harmony characters. Uh, but at the, this is a thing that can work. It's returning, and at the same time, the limited five star light cone. Also for Dan Hang, honestly. If you really like him and you want to pull for, like, C2, I think, yeah, maybe you can go here. Um, but I think the problem is that Dan Hang, with that Sparkle, with that C2, I think right now is a little bit underwhelming in the game. Uh, considering, like, so many very, very strong 5-star DPS have come out since. I think this is kind of the last hurrah for Dan Hang. Like, this is probably going to be the last time he's going to be useful at C2. I, I, I don't know. I feel like if you really like him, this is, like, now he still is gonna be relatively viable. But we are approaching 3.0 dangerously. And I think it's gonna become, like, fully obsolete relatively soon. So, you know. Pull when you've considered all of those. Lighter than the sun will become available once again. The four-star light cone dreams montage has also been added to this battle. We don't transport memories, we also create the past. Okay, that's surprisingly an abundance light cone. I wonder what he can do. Abundance. Maybe something that works with Lingsha, since she just came out. So maybe something that gives some break effect. That would be great. If we Because we do have a, a break effect light cone, right? The one that you can use on Gallagher. Uh, but I think the problem with that light cone is that it is a... It gives break effect, but the effect itself is kind of selfish. I think it's like when you attack an enemy with your healer, you heal yourself. Which, apart from being useful, like, the effect is kind of boring. Let's put it this way. So if this is like a break effect light cone that has a better, like, even an energy regen or something else, that would be a good upgrade or a good potential viable option, in my opinion. So I guess we'll find out. And our lineup. And in version 2.6 in second half war prevent, Trailblazers can acquire the Okay, so we have a reroll for Akron. Uh man, March 7th constellation. Like preservation March. I feel like there's no reason to use preservation March 7. Uh, now that her hunt form is here and it's just simply way freaking better. Um now for Sempo and Pella. Um, Pella is a very strong character. She's still very strong. She's very good with Acheron. She's also Nihility. So if you if you need some Nihility characters in your team with Acheron, she's a fantastic option. Her defense shred is amazing. That said, Pella is not really a character that needs Constellation to actually be strong. Um, so it's not an absolute priority. And I'm pretty sure you can get a free copy from some of the events from the past that you that are permanently available. Uh, but yeah, it's it's nice to have her here if you like Pella a lot and you want to like you you know make her very strong for Akron. That's a good option. Now Pella, there are better options than Pella nowadays. I think um, I think we Zhao Shuo is probably better at this point. Like if you want to run like Zhao Shuo as well as someone like Black Swan, for example. But I guess you could do Pella and Zhao Shuo together if you wanted. Um, that probably stacks. 
Uh, sample, very underwhelming. I think sample is just not good enough anymore. Uh, it's not going to be very good for dots and it's just not going to be the best option for Acheron. But if you're a new player and you don't have a lot of 9 characters and you need someone to work with Acheron, that is a possibility. Uh, there you go for the 4 star light cone. I really don't have much to say. The Along the Passing Shore is a very good light cone for Acheron and that's pretty much it. So is it a very strong value for your account in general? I'm not too sure. Now, the other thing I do want to say regarding this banner and the four stars here is that those four stars are less and less likely to be any kind of useful, Pella included. Sempo is just outclassed by a lot of characters and even if you want to have a dot character with the Acheron, uh, I just, there's better option. And even if you don't have them, we have a character called Fugue coming up. That's going to be the five star version of Tingyun. And she's Fire Annihility. So it's like, I don't think you want those characters. I feel like if you want an Annihility character, she's probably going to be more useful for Acheron. Um, so yeah, that would be my thoughts. Now, we don't know her kit. I'm just speculating. But I'm assuming she's going to have some amount of uh, debuff or, I mean, she has to have a debuff, right? As an ILT character? Probably. Um, but she could, um, yeah, I don't know. I I'm assuming she's going to be a good option for Acheron. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know what to say about this one. The four star here. I feel like both four stars on phase one and phase two are kind of a bit eh, Limited five star lie. character, Acheron. The limited five star light cone along the passing shore. All right, what's the we'll other rerun? We'll also have a boosted drop rate. The drop rates of the limited. Ooh, ooh, Aventurine. Ooh. Okay, so the thing here, Aventurine is one of the premium uh, support character, the premium system in the game. He's very, very, very good. I think he's probably. I think him and Huo Huo are probably the best support in the game right now. Uh, the best, the best sustainers, right? Um, you could make a case that uh, Fu Xuan is on the same level, right? Um, but I, I would say that Aventurine and Hu Hu are on top, and then below you have like Fu Xuan and someone like Lingsha. Now the thing here is that I assume at this point, unless you're new and you don't have two premium system characters, um, and because Lingsha just came out, and I assume. If you didn't have premium healers, you probably picked up Lingsha. So now the question is, if you still have resources that you want to spend on the sustain, you can definitely go for Aventurine because he's very, very strong. And then you have Aventurine and potentially Lingsha and your account is set. You need to sustain. And it can be preservation, it can be abundance, whatever you want. But you probably don't want more than that. So unless you really like the character or it's really a, a straight up upgrade, for some of the teams that you want to run. Um, you probably don't need to if you want to save. And I think saving right now might be a good option because with 2.7 coming out, there's going to be some very strong characters in my opinion. Now, Venturin is very, very good. He is incredibly powerful. His shields are crazy. He has a debuff on his ultimate. Um, he has some follow-up attacks, so that's going to make him fit in a lot of team composition. He's going to be one of the best in slot for Fei Shao, for example. He's going to also be very good to pair with, like, Acheron, for example. He can fit in so many teams, it's crazy. Um, so, this is a decent pool, and the four stars are still underwhelming. But if you're lacking a proper premium sustain, that's definitely an option. Um, so, yeah. Five star character Aventurine and the limited five star light cone, inherently unjust destiny, will also be boosted. <laughs> Time for a short break. The program will resume in just a few moments. All right, well, that's my thoughts on the banners as well as Rapa's kids. Do let me know what you guys think. Do let me know if you're going to be pulling for those characters. Personally, while I do like Rapa's design, I am going to be saving for Fugue, 100%. I'm going to be saving for Fugue. I don't know if I'm going to be pulling for Sunday, honestly. Um, I just want Fugue 100%, and I'm going to have to go and guarantee that. Rapa, she looks fun, but do I need her right now? I don't think so, because, like, I don't need characters for Pure Fiction right now. I got Lingsha, I got Jade. 
I have Herta, Himiko. Uh, outside of Pure Fiction, I've got Akron, Firefly. I have Fei Shao. So uh, my account is doing pretty well, right? So it's not like I really need her either for Pure Fiction or outside of Pure Fiction. Maybe I want to grab her in the future when she reruns. But right now, I'm kind of like, okay, this is an easy skip. This is an easy patch to skip. Especially because the four stars are not very interesting. So I think I'm just going to be saving for uh, at least Fugue. Maybe Sunday. Not guaranteed. Uh, I'm going to wait and see to, to, to figure out what his account is going to be. Um, the other advantage for saving for Fugue is that because she's phase 2, that means that her phase is not going to be over until we get the drip marketing for potentially 2.8. If there's going to be a 2.8, if there's not a 2.8, we'll get drip marketing for 3.0, which either way is going to be amazing. So, um, th yeah, th there's definitely a value in waiting it out a little bit longer. So that would be my call. I was about to say, wow, I think there's nothing else interesting in this video. But no, I can milk it some more. We? This is Harta, right? Is this her? I think it is. Yeah, because this is Harta's avatar. And with the color, I think this is the real Harta. Like, at first glance, you could say, oh, she looks like Akron. But no, 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 because of the boots, right? But no, this is Herta. Same hair color, the very, like, black and purple. Ooh, adult Herta. It's not adult Herta, it's real Herta. Because Herta is, like, hundreds of years old, right? And uh, she was, she's an emanator of Nu, most likely. She was gifted something from Nu. Uh, and we know that all the small Hertas are puppets. So this might be real Harta. What's interesting here is that she straight up has a witch hat, which is very reminiscent of someone like Lisa or the Eggs and Circle from Genshin Impact. Um, and like, I, I feel like the book she has and like what she has on the table here with the secret and stuff, it feels very esoteric here. This is very, very cool. I wonder if this means that they are confirming that we'll get a 5-star Herta. Because I really want a 5-star Herta. I love Herta. I love the Kuru Kuru. But I want real Emanator Herta to be playable. This is so random out of nowhere. But I, I, I love it. Okay, interesting. Interesting. Uh, her design seems really fun. I'm sorry, I'm sick. It doesn't seem very cute. Um, I'll be honest, I love the, the whole goth uh, kind of aspect to it. You can see, like, the the thing she has on the side here is actually an arm. Like, there's a hand at the end there. It's very, very cool. Do we see anything else from here? No, it's just a preview for the new, new uh, Divergent Universe. And then... The new set. Do they say anything about the new artifact set? No, they don't say. This is not... Uh, I don't know what... Someone told me this was, like, going to be Planet Ornament. It's not Planet Ornament. This is a new set. This is Cavern of Corrosion. So this is not Planet Ornament. Uh, then we get some free pools. And there's a whole wrap here that's pretty boring. So, yeah, anyway. Uh, overall, some cool stuff. Very, very excited for her, though. Very excited. Um, 1333, if I want something to talk about. No, I don't want. I, I don't care. I, uh, wh what is this? Why would I? Why would I care about that? It just seems boring. Anyway, yeah. Uh, that's my very small uh, look at uh, adult heart. I guess uh, this could have been a short. But uh, cheers.